Welcome to Time Bold Office Hours on September 8th, 2022. You are live with Doug and Quinston. We are here to check your workflows, answer your questions, and generally just make sure you get the best out of Time Bold. Got some big product development updates to talk about. We do have Josh on the line. Uh, Josh, do you have any specific questions? Can you join us or are you just kind of hanging out? Do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself while you're in your commute? At LSU, and I was uh, looking at the uh, program. I, I actually downloaded it this week, and uh, a lot of my grad student program is, is remote. And um, most of this, um, most of my work is, is creating presentations and writing uh, dissertation papers. And um, I, I noticed a lot of my recordings. I was some of it's um, kind of ad libbed. A lot of it is, is scripted. But I, when I have to have a train of thought, sometimes I stop. I pause. <laughs> I mean, it's just human nature, I guess, to, to gather your thoughts. And I notice I go back and play, and I'm having uh, some delays in it. And um, usually, it's not very long. That's why it interested interested me, uh, or your product interested me rather, is because when I did play it back, I'm like, man, I got to record this whole thing for a two or three second pause uh, because it's being presented to the entire um, program and you're being peer reviewed and professor reviewed. You know, quality makes a difference. And I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. So sometimes I'll find myself re-recording a 30 minute video four or five, six plus times. And I'm like, this is a huge time sink. I mean, I don't want to get a lesser grade due to quality and presentation, but I mean, I can't spend hours, not to mention your editing. And that's a whole different. Is, so do you, do you equate, Josh, thank you for that. Do you equate editing uh, that being a whole different issue or is that the issue that makes you have to re-record? So for so for example, are you why do you feel the pressure to get it perfect in one take? Probably more of a issue because I've not historically done a lot of editing. I mean, usually in the past, well, I guess let me let me backtrack with that or premise it rather. I didn't have a editing software. I recently uh, got one, so I, I'd never really done a lot of editing in the past. It was just a one take uh, recording. So once I started doing this program, uh, I did more of doing this recently than I've ever done. I mean, if I would maybe do some vocal stuff or screen casting, but not um, presentation type material. So so after you get done with your recording, like what made you think when you, th when you, when you talk about video editing was the first thing that kind of popped up in your mind, like the traditional video editors, you had, have you ever edited video before? Had you ever talked to somebody who'd done it to know that, Hey, look, I'm in for a world of hurt as far as time goes. No, no, I've never, um, I've, I've never spoken to anyone about it. Never even tried it. But, uh, I mean, from what just pulling up editing program, I mean, it, it didn't look overwhelming, but I have an IT background. So, you know, if it has a fairly intuitive design, uh, I know you can, you can get as deep into it as you want to. Uh, but the basic, uh, having your your media on one um, one section and your audio in another, changing around and making flipping it out. I mean, I, you know, that just looked like pretty basic stuff. But I haven't really dove uh, extremely deep into it. Like I said, I just started kind of, um, I guess, get my feet wet in that per se. Time Bolt wants to be able to reach people like yourself that are just starting out, that have maybe even never touched an editor before. That shows that this is a this isn't going to take you a long time. It's not something that you're going to spend three weekends held up in your room trying to learn to do just to learn that the most simple cut you're going to be doing for you know two to three hours um, on a timeline. So how did you know to when you look up video editors? Most people are thinking of Premiere, Final Cut. You know, just you know some of the more uh, popular video editors. How did you land on Timebolt to begin with? I actually was referred. Um, I'm in a uh, just a, a forum uh, for software and stuff, and um, someone suggested Time Vault to me. And, I, and to be quite honest, I'd never heard of it. And I had been looking. And the reason I I, I received the suggestion is I had purchased one recording um, software, and I was like, I was exploring another option because I was not receiving any customer service. <laughs> I'd purchased it; it was not working. I tried it on without going in a long story, but I tried it on Windows 10, Windows 11, Mac OS, numerous machines, and it was not working on any of them. And I I couldn't, I just sent probably four or five emails and website and Facebook messenger and nobody responded. So I'm like, I got to find something else, but I have to have this on a weekly basis. And there are some free options out there, but you know, it, it's kind of one of those things. I don't mind investing money in something quality product, but I also expect it to work and I expect customer service. I mean, that's what you pay for. And, and, and so recording, so do you use Timebolt to actually do the recording aspect as well? Capture? I have not. I just downloaded it, like I said, um, Sun no, Monday, I think is when I uh, downloaded it. And uh, I should be doing my recording in the next couple of days. But I did uh, play around with my recording from last week, and I saw that uh, how much time can be saved on that one that was in particular that 
I noticed, uh, and someone else pointed out too, that the pausing and the delay sometimes, uh, even even my tempo on it, I could have sped up a little bit. Just, um, and I don't think the tempo would have been quite as noticeable if I didn't have short pauses. Sometimes it's transition of slides, having to wait a second or two. Um, and I'm sure, being that I'm not a professional, um, some people are going to say, okay, if maybe they're from a different area, maybe up north, they're faster than I do. Uh, being in the south, you know, we have that southern draw. A lot of brand new editors don't understand that just simply removing those pauses, what that does to the tempo. You know, you go from, if, if you're speaking, if you believe you speak slower with more of a Southern draw, you know, the, the, you're probably at about 150 words per minute. And that once you actually cut out all the dead air, right, you're going, if you're at 150, you're going to be going up to like 185 words per minute just by simply removing the pauses. And so were you able to see yourself dead air free, at least in one video, uh, the, your test video that you ran through? Did you like render one out or? or... Yeah, I did, I did render one out and I did notice a, a substantial difference. Uh, I was having to tweak a little bit uh, based on um, the sensitivity of the volume. Some of that I believe may have been my shorting, not, um, and I did watch your tutorial on that and I was able to get it very, very close. Uh, I did notice uh, my tempo sped up getting the gaps out. Then I was noticing there was some sound uh, or maybe just a word or two that was flipping off because of uh, my microphone is either a little low or, and I think more the, uh, I think it was more because of the noise reduction. I know will reduce your uh, your recording sensitivity and I think it was muffling it a little bit or at least reducing the gain on it. I just had to adjust uh, micro adjustments on that. But I mean, everything came out really good. I noticed uh, a huge difference in the time. I want to say, I mean, it was saving me like nine minutes on my video. Just the, just removing the dead air, running it through the automated process. Correct. Now, it was a little less uh, once I, like I said, made the, made the adjustments, but it still saved me three or four minutes uh, just on the adjustments, not to mention uh, it just the professionalism sounded so much better the final product fantastic and that's that's exactly that's exactly what, what we want to be able to do is reach out to these new editors that are just starting to talk to a camera and break through and say look you know 80 percent of the battle for most people starting out is just simply going to be how do i make my video short as possible remove the pauses and you know get people from a to b as quick as possible um and 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 certainly allow me to be able to talk to a camera and not fear having to do restarts or if i make a mistake uh you know actors and people on people in theater practice for months right before they get up and deliver a monologue we're basically you know most people here are just flipping on a camera uh, or a phone and and starting to record and not realizing that Hey, look, you can, if it's going to be impossible for you to deliver a pause free 10 minute dialogue, uh, mistake free in video talking to a camera, because once all that's done, all of a sudden, if you go learn a final cut pro or Adobe premiere, you're actually learning effects, not, Hey, look, I'm going to learn some effects. I'm going to spend the first three hours of my creative time cutting up video cut up a timeline. And what I wanted to do, Josh, okay, this is specifically a feature for people like you and I, okay? You know, you listen to your voice and you're like, man, my ego tells me I'm talking a lot faster. I'm doing it with a lot less pause. Well, imagine this. Let's say a presentation for one of your papers. Are your teachers, are there any instances where your teacher gives you like, hey, look, it's gotta be like 10 minutes long. Like you can't yeah. go over 10 minutes? Uh, yeah, every one of them, they give us a window. Excellent, a window. I like that, a window. So <laughs> I'm actually gonna use that in our marketing material, a window. So you're gonna have to save it to a specific window. There's two options now in this new time bolt, 4.6.0, that's gonna be coming out uh, that, that is built ready. We're gonna be releasing it in an auto update. So if you've got, let's say you've got a 10 minute, 10 minute presentation, okay? There's two things that you can do. There's a thing called turbo mode, okay? You hit activate turbo mode. And you go to the three different little dots, okay? Each one of the features in this product, everything you click does do something important. Quinston is not one to waste space or time. So if you see it on the screen, it's something relative and, and, and important to, to time bolt. You hit up turbo mode and on turbo mode, I don't know if you can see my screen, maybe you're, uh, since you're driving. Now you're gonna be able to take your video. So let's say you get done with your recording and you get done cutting out all the stuff that you don't want, okay? The dead air's gone. You're already talking now at 180 words per minute and it's 10 minutes and 30 seconds long, okay? But what you got is all important. What do you do now? Well, what 30 seconds do you cut? Well, don't cut any of the 30 seconds. What you can do is, is there's a, in turbo mode, you can time limit to fit within, okay? So, and it's based on seconds, right? So you do 60 seconds times 10 minutes, you know, 600, uh, 600 seconds, is that right? Am I, yep. doing, yeah, six, <clears throat> you just put in 600 into this. And so what's gonna happen, Josh, is that that, that, uh, that 10 minute and 30 second file is gonna be saved and compressed down into your 10 minute 
window. I had a five second buffer. So I, so when I said like 600 seconds, I do 555 seconds because it adds a five second buffer. But now all of a sudden, all your information in that video is actually sped up. Okay. So if I don't have the, the right file to be able to show what the calculations would be, but something like that would be sped up, you know, like your, your voice, your actual voice would be sped up between seven to 8%. Right. And that means you're just speaking at a higher words per minute. It doesn't, you don't sound like a chipmunk. You just sound Sound like you've just gained IQ points. And that's the same with the speed multiplier. With these videos on YouTube, with these long form uh, uh, videos like these Zoom calls, if you go back and watch our Zoom, I speed up the last four Zooms since we've had, three Zooms since we've had this, by a speed multiplier of 1.125x speed. That's, that's basically 12.5% faster, okay? And that just helps you deliver content. 12.5% faster, right? And and once, I guarantee you, when you remove dead air and you increase your rate of speech by a normal factor anywhere between, you know, 1% to 12%, no one's going to be sitting there and going in and listening to this at 1.5x speed and sounding like a chipmunk on YouTube. It, the speed's actually baked in. And so you're just going to sound smarter and faster in real life and do video better than all your peers. So that's uh, that's that's the advantage of turbo mode. It, it does take a little while to long, uh, just, just be aware that it does take longer to render because essentially what it does after it makes a cut instead of just going to the next cut it compresses that down by 12 you know it speeds it up by 12.5 percent uh but after you know after that's done you've got a video that'll hit your 10 minute mark or you can take a 30 minute video and it turns into 27 but it's not just the three minutes you save it is truly the engagement that you get it's a constant fire hose information most of this is what it's for anyway uh that's why you know we're moving into you know some languaging where the only pause in video should be a button that you click so that's that's what what uh, turbo mode is and that'd be amazing because like i said they'll they'll either give the uh the verbiage will be something like about 20 minute video so that gives you, you know a little bit of you know wiggle room there um but like this week it's a 15 to 20 minute video so um it, it just changes per professor and you know uh per assignment so but that that would really help you because uh, sometimes when you're trying to drag it out uh, or you just have so much information you're, you're trying to um assimilate and present uh because you have to have theory and then you got to turn around and you have to give your, your opinion on it and advantages and disadvantages or a comparison, whatever the case may be. Then you're, you're trying to think and, and put it on your own words. That's when I, I notice more pausing and, and just trying to present it. So, and then I end up either, <laughs> then I usually run over or I'm right at it. And then if I cut my, uh, my pause and stuff out, I'm like, oh man, now I'm going to be short. So it, this gives them versatility. Yeah. Do, now, when you say short, our teacher, when teachers say 15 to 20 minutes, like if you're able to, you're basically going to be able to present this. You had two students, one that used time bolt and one that didn't, and use time bolt with the with with removing dead air and cutting and using turbo. You're going to be able to deliver information about thirty to thirty five percent faster. Any of your peers, given all things are the same, are are you going to get? Do you think that's going to be something that naturally delights a teacher? Right. Like for me, if I if if I got a video from from Josh and two different students, and Josh is able to say the same thing in thirty five percent less time and and inherently keep my attention, uh, I'm gonna have more favorable opinions of them, even though it, the video is not as long, right? Oh it, yeah, most definitely. Cause I, I mean, especially like you say, if it's a 10 to 15 minute video, that gets that window. Uh, I, I like those um, assignment directions much better than say 20 minute uh, or about 20 minutes, because I don't know, I like things to be very specific to where I know what I should be expecting. And yes, I would much rather have the, the information presented precisely, but in a shorter time span. And, and would it be possible well, Josh, just just for like we built, we're building this product. I mean, we're building Time Bolt like for this particular use case, right? Like to, to get new editors. Would it be possible uh, that after you submit your first assignment, uh, one that you know, after you do your first assignment all the way with Time Bolt and record it and use the use the dead air and the turbo, if the teachers reply back with anything about the aesthetics of your video or how different it is, would there be any way that you might be able to share that with us? Notwithstanding the quality of your work, just uh, yeah, I don't see there would be any issue i mean i can type it out or cut and paste it i mean as long as i'm not presenting their their name or whatever i don't yeah. have a problem with that yeah I, I would just really like to see if if, if teachers kind of if educators kind of get blown away when you know their students come back with a youtube level speed cut video um in a classroom setting you know and you don't even have to tell them how you did it right <laughs> because they, they're probably still thinking if they've done any type of remote teaching okay that that required any type of video they're going to be thinking that you just spent two and a half hours hand cutting up video and doing some cool stuff in final cut I, i'm sure they pointed out because i mean that 
I mean, they're, they're writing like a page of information about every presentation. So, I mean, because, you know, we have to do a really long uh, PowerPoint and then discuss it. And then, you know, uh, so they're, they're, they're breaking down all different aspects of it. So I'm pretty sure it'll, it will be. Excellent. And, and it look, looks like you, you may, you may have cut off there a little bit, a little bit early. I, 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 I do want to let you know, as far as when you talked about PowerPoint, make sure that it's it's better if you're not recording PowerPoint inside PowerPoint, okay? Because it records as a variable uh, frame rate file. So use you can use Timebolt or the, another record another uh, capture device, and uh, just make sure you're not using PowerPoint to actually record the video. It, it won't work inside Timebolt well. It won't work in other uh, video editors well because it's a very it records as variable frame rate. When you're using Timebolt, if you were to record a PowerPoint with Timebolt, all you do is just stop talking. Right, you just learn that once you stop talking, video's on, off, and once you start talking, the video's on. So you can use those, you can pause for 30 minutes as you get a new slide ready, design a new slide, and then start up. And then when you go and throw that video through Time Bolt, it's like that time never happened, it's just skipped instantly, right? Yeah, that, that would make life a lot easier on doing it that way versus recording the whole thing and changing slides and then you bring a thought for the next slide. I mean, it would really... Uh... The other advantage that you have, okay, with when your timeline is entirely cut up for you. So as you're going through, you stop, pause, you can pause between transitions, but because because when you throw your, your video into Time Bolt, your timeline's already cut up, that also means things are obviously very fast to turn on and off. Don't be afraid to do 10 different retakes. Maybe you find you don't even have to script out a PowerPoint presentation, it's that getting up talking about it over and over and over, you know, with the slides and then moving to the next slide, you might find actual time savings there because cutting it out, okay, as you're going through, just remember, you go to playback, you put 1.5x speed, just start right there. I, I, that way your default is always 1.5x speed when you're previewing, you just hit your play, put your play bar. Now when you hit the space bar, it'll always default to 1.5x. And as you're flying through this, Josh, you don't, if, as soon as you come up on a retake, you're gonna know which ones are retakes, you know, as you're going through. All you do is just hit the O button and it shuts it off, right? It shuts off that, like you don't even have to listen to the whole retake. It'll turn your retake off, you click O, turn the retake off and then skip the next period of silence as well and go straight to the next retake, right? So like bad moments don't even really happen in Time Bolt. So it's all about the, it's all about the quick keys. No one likes learning new stuff, okay? I, I don't like learning new things, but the quick keys on Time Bolt, they just change everything. It's just, it, just remember the acronym S, I, we have the M now, right? So that's, that's going to be important, but I call it slop. I mean, you know, it's a suck ass word, but at least it's something to remember. Uh, S turns, uh, splits the timeline. Okay. It creates that split. So you can cut things out of a middle of a timeline. L increases the speed of your playback sp uh, speed. O turns scenes on or off. And P is how you punch in and punch out. So imagine with your paper, for example, Josh, you've got a PowerPoint screen. You've got a PowerPoint screen and you've got a uh, piece of information the bottom right hand side that you want to talk about because it's like really important to the scene uh you can you can do punch in and punch out you hit the letter p let me share my simply hit the letter p you can zoom in up to 175 percent and then say let's say i wanted to get that time bolt uh pillow i hit option or alt and then my arrow keys so i can then zoom around on what part of the screen I, i'm looking at to accentuate okay so your alt or option plus the arrow keys so slop Alt option plus arrow keys and um, uh, our biggest, our, our big new announcement today, one of our big new announcements today is for markers, okay? And markers, I use markers uh, to edit long Zoom video, co long Zoom content and uh, for actually categorizing it for YouTube for these shows and also you use it for creating shorts and reels for Instagram and TikTok. So we know that people start off, you start off maybe if you're doing a YouTube video with a 20 minute timeline. Well, after you cut out all the dead air, the repeats and the mistakes, now you've got eight minutes of usable, high quality, you know, punchy content. Well, now a lot of people also have to save something for like a two minute Instagram reel or, you know, a three minute Instagram reel or a, you know, two minute TikTok. You just click the letter M. Okay, and when you see as you're going through on your first pass, you click the letter M. M will mark these scenes, and what that does is it basically provides this saving funnel, right? So now, let's say you've got uh, two minutes of high quality highlights out of that, you know, eight minute YouTube video. You're able to now go in with marks, okay, and do keep only mark cuts. I click this button, and it'll tell you make sure that you have saved your timeline as a JSON file because it's not something you can just jump out of uh, if you make 10 or 15, 10 or 10 or more edits. Uh, 
uh, but you can do Command Z. So let's just, I, I've already saved my timeline edits with this JSON. I just, here, I'll just do it right here while we're on the phone. You basically hit Save Timeline Cuts. See how it saves it as a JSON file, right? So now I know this is saved no matter what I do. Now I can do Keep Only Mark Cuts. This is a brand new feature. I'm, I'm getting a video on it done today. We do Keep Only Mark Cuts. And now out of that whole video, the only mark cuts, what I do is I just put it in the, uh, uh, put it in the red and I hit the up arrow key. Okay, to go to my first green section and I hit play. Now I wait for some customers to so now all only the highlighted only the highlighted parts of that entire video will be shown. I hit command Z to undo that and get back to my regular timeline and now uh, uh, now you have a short condensed smaller version that you can then go in and do uh, render as a video, uh, a single video or export as an XML file, right? And the markers also, this is really important. Uh, if you get it, if you get into uploading long form YouTube content like this, for example, where we're talking, what happens is after I go through the entire timeline and cut out all the stuff, you know, take an hour and a half long Zoom call like this and turn it into 40 minutes of usable content. As you're go as I'm going through, what would happen is I would then have to take that video, upload it to YouTube, YouTube, okay, and now go through and watch that entire video again to figure out where the chapter marker should go, right? Like where were the, where did we start talking about something entirely different? Well, in Time Bolt now, what I can do is as I'm going through and doing my first pass editing, if I switch topics, I just hit M, I click M, it creates that bar right below. And so now what happens, uh, I, I had a couple of markers, right? Now just one. Did I? Did, I, I didn't. I didn't. I had a few more, yeah. Oh, I thought I, I had. had a few more, I thought I had some more in here. Okay, so I just added a bunch of markers, right? And so these would all represent different time frames. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to say download markers text file. Check this out. What I have here, right here, is this little text file. All of our markers and the time frame set up to where all I have to do is just copy paste this and I paste it right into the description of the YouTube video, right? So now all I'm doing, instead of having to watch another 44 minute video, I just go to these specific spots, okay? And then label in, in YouTube, marker one becomes something like, you know, uh, maybe this is, you know, we started talking ad about- spot. Yeah, an ad spot, yeah. Like it doesn't, it could be it could be any number of things, but this, this saves easily 40 minutes on the finishing side of things. Uh, if you're dealing with the 40 minute video, it'll save you the same amount of time uh, going through it. So we're really excited for that. That also includes, okay, that, that even includes the nuance Let's say you're going in and you want to add turbo, which makes sense to a video that's 44 minutes, you know, that's 30, 40 minutes long. I go activate, uh, activate turbo mode. I want to add my 1.125x speed multiplier. So you can imagine now all the markers, okay, if you were to download a markers text file would be jacked, right? They'd be all like 12.5% seconds too late. So we actually added the ability to download the markers text file, which will take into consideration any additional speed limits that you put um, uh, on the video, any additional speed. You happen limit. to know if you add markers, will that translate back into, say, if you download the XML to bring into Premiere, will the yes. mark, you know, it will? That's awesome. Well, I don't know. I, I don't. I, would... Yes, it will. Yeah. Because it only takes into account the green part. So once uh, the markers basically take out the red and it calculates the timing without the red part in it. So it calculates the, the markers as if it was an entire rendered video. So the XML is just the green part. So yeah, it does. Well, well, I think what he's asking, well, uh, maybe yeah. this is part of a two part question. One is uh, you can export just the markers. Like right now I could do an XML, right? And it will just have the green part or the, what's what I what I chose to mark. Are you asking, does, is there some type of marker that, oh. that uh, yeah, so like in Premiere Pro, you can add a marker as well. Um, now it doesn't, I, I really like the text file that uh, this generates. It doesn't generate a text file. You know, there's no, it's just basically for editing purposes is, uh, I know that marker two is the beginning of, you know, a different segment. Oh. And so you can add markers in the timeline of, of Premiere, for example. I don't know if there's like a flag to say, hey, this is a marker for the timeline as well. But, um, you know, that's that's actually what I do now. It's, it's, I'm really interested in this feature because right now, it, when you know, I cover a video that has four different topics. As I'm editing, uh, I edit in Premiere Pro, I will make sure to drop a marker in Premiere Pro at the beginning oh, of each okay. segment so that I can I can find the beginning later and add this exact data to the description of YouTube. So that may be a feature request. <laughs> then yeah, is... I, I thought you were asking about the text file, whether the timings are correct. Um, But sure, yeah, I mean, we should be able to like add a marker in the XML, uh, then yeah. you wouldn't have to like uh, do it all over again. So yeah, that probably should be a feature that we will be able to add in. So Chad, it sounds like, like with markers that this is something that you see some value in. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Now, 
here i'm going to turn on my video here uh, if it'll work um so i kind of have to edit in premiere pro eventually because i i add transitions and sound effects and other aspects to my video that i sadly just can't do in time bolt um so in general it's it would be a nice first pass to do it but in general i just kind of cut the video export the xml and then jump straight into premiere so uh i don't know if i'd spend enough time in time bolt finding those segments since i'm basically going to do it already in premiere but for people who don't use a secondary uh editing software like i do this is great because those chapter markers in the YouTube description box are awesome. They're, anytime I see yeah. a video with them, mm -hmm. I appreciate them a lot. And um, I definitely think it helps users uh, stay with a video because if they can jump into the topic that they want to watch, it may seem counterintuitive, but that actually increases watch time. They're not clicking away from the video if they can't find the topic. They'll click to the area of the video that they want and then watch the video. So that's good Correct. for creators. Uh, what, yeah. I, I guess one of the questions I have, Chad, and I have with all, all you know, advanced level creators, a lot of people, like I said, they just don't want to learn something new. And, uh, you know, like even like a key, right? Like I, I don't even, I still don't know what the damn shortcut key is on, you know, Premiere for some of the things that I do, you know, a thousand times. What I, what I would like to challenge you is, is that you can save so much additional time with the quick keys in Time Bolt that it makes sense to entirely cut your timeline up in Time Bolt before you're pulling into, uh, before you pull it into Premiere. Uh, that we, you know, because of how, once the timeline's cut up, how quickly things turn on and off, that means, you know, it's super fast to remove retakes and mistakes it just bounces right to the next one are you are you pretty familiar with like the quick keys the s so i've been i've been looking at at it um and i think that it's really powerful but at the same time it's almost a double-edged sword with the learning new things is i've been editing in premiere pro for 10 years um something like that and so uh with the type of videos that i'm making Sometimes I will need to do frame by frame, very specific edits. I'm all, I'm ba even if I spent an extra 15 minutes in time bolt to do like say punch ins and, and okay, well, that was a bad take, take that out. Um, I'm still going to have to go back into premiere to, uh, to fiddle anyway. So for me, it makes sense to, to just skip all that and just jump straight into premiere where I know every shortcut there is, That's right. you know, uh, you know, that, yeah. so that makes, that makes, that makes total sense and so your 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 time bolt for you is just basically a way to cut up a timeline and get rid of and get rid of the dead absolutely. air it, and absolutely i'll have a two-hour video and that'll cut down to 30 minutes and and in what i used to do was i would bring that into premiere and look at the waveforms and go okay i'm talking here cut the beginning cut the end yeah. and just that process could take forever i mean at least <laughs> half an hour to an hour i had two questions two technical ish questions and maybe uh and by the way love time bolt and i love that y'all are doing this office hours things i only found out about it recently and uh, i think it's the coolest thing to uh to talk with your customers and get feedback directly um so thank you for that so two technical questions and maybe one feature request uh, my technical question is, is every time i import uh, a timeline so this is the xml from from time bolt i have to do an extra step which is to go in here go to audio channels and for some reason i don't know where this is happening but it's literally every time my second audio needs to be switched back to audio that it was it was originally um and then once i do that then as i zoom in here this uh top uh audio right here this is the mic only and then this bottom audio is mic plus game sounds so i'll just mute that and it's just an extra step that i have to take every every single time i make a video is just to go in there and change that and i didn't know if that was in the xml or maybe that's a bug on premiere's side or what uh, that was uh, yeah, that, that that is uh, an extra step uh, that you have to do because what happens is the XML doesn't really know which audio you want to show. I see. So it, yeah, so it needs to be explicitly uh, told Premiere Pro. Uh, if you save your Premiere Pro project, if you and you reopen it, Premiere Pro already knows which tracks you want yeah. to show in. Yeah, XML yeah. doesn't really know. So you I have see. to like, uh, this is the no. same issue you have with uh, DaVinci Resolve too. So the same thing happens in DaVinci Resolve because the XML doesn't have any- It have, doesn't do it, audio it, yeah, like channels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it knows it knows where the tracks are and it, it can find it, but like okay. it doesn't know which tracks to show. So it just copies all the tracks and just displays them. Okay, that, that's totally fine. It's a yeah. pretty easy workaround. Uh, the other technical question I had is, always at the end and this one isn't very long but uh time bolt does not take out the last after the last it. word i 
That's yeah, an ongoing the last issue. silence, basically. Okay. Yeah, we are still uh, so those that. are just my yeah. awesome. awesome. And once again, super easy fix. I just, if uh, you know, making one edit versus, I mean, you can look at this timeline. Uh, <laughs> thousands of edits. <laughs> uh, you know, this is. Uh, so the feature request that I had is um, what I would like to do. Sometimes I'm recording a video and it goes long. And so I'll have to pause. So I normally stop recording, walk away, come back, hit record again. It would be fantastic if I could import multiple videos at once, say the recording ended up being three videos long, one, two, and three, and then have time bolt squish all the videos together. So when I export the either, you know, render the video or export the timeline that, uh, that all video files are in that. And another use case is I was thinking about like, if I was going to start vlogging or something like that, uh, it would be great. You know, that could have 15 clips of video throughout the day. And I'll, I only want, you know, the voice parts in, in it, same sort of situation versus going in, creating a new timeline for every clip and then copying the footage over to a master timeline and all that stuff. Um, so, uh, so there is a plugin for time boot uh, for Premiere Pro, which you can use if you have multiple files which are stacked on top of each other. I don't think these like, are yeah. stacked. These aren't stacked though. What he's saying- Yeah, it wouldn't, no. it wouldn't be a multi-camera shoot. It would be like okay. one- Long Longer timeline. Oh, okay. Yeah, it would basically think of like, let's say I go to an event that's two hours long, and I end up getting 15 videos from that event. It's not, they're not all at the same time. It's not multi camera. Up. It would, but it would be great if all 15 of those videos could be A, run through the time bolt edit sequence, and B, all in one timeline instead of needing to run time bolt on 15 yeah. separate videos. Yeah, it'd be badass. A, a string, uh, it's almost like a string function. So what, what we have right now is, um, so there, there is a batch processing feature that we have added in the new version. It's strictly for, currently it's just rendering out uh, the file in the same, um, uh, rendering it through time bolt. It right. doesn't render out XML. It doesn't give out XML yet. What can happen in the future is that maybe we could create a mechanism where if you select the batch processing thing, click on it, it, it opens up a dialog box where you have, let's say you have all of your videos in the same folder, press control A, select all the files in that folder. And then you say, I want to cut this with the default set, set, set settings, and then have all of these in one XML file. Exactly. Yeah, so, so that might solve the issue that you just mentioned. Yeah. Right. Or even the, like, yeah, the, the, as the simple as, go ahead. I think the problem, I think the problem, I think the problem with that might be, let's say you've got three or four different files. Everything happened in sequence, right? You said it's a two hour event. It happens from front to back. So it's not like you're, you know, they'll have a specific order when they come in. But if we got into like, hey, let's just do, I think if we just said, hey, let's just blanket do 15 different, you know, three different XMLs into, into one, you lose the ability to go in for the people that are wanting to have some granular control and cut their timeline up before it ends up. Uh, no, no, it, it could be a flag that they set, whether they, whether they want a single file or they want multiple files. It could be just a checkbox. Okay, I want a single file. It could be a checkbox. You check that right. box. If you check the box, then you, you only get one file. If you don't check the box, you get X number of files. But if, if but in batch, it's not like you're touching anything inside Time Bolt. You're not yeah, going... you're not, you're not. I mean, That's... if they want to like touch everything and like if, if they want to make granular changes and they should not be using the batch feature in the first place. Like, I mean, it's not, you should not be. I mean, I wonder if it's yeah. as simple as after running, like, you know, the process now is click select video or audio file, and then it, it runs. If in that process, when I hit select video or audio file, I choose three things, could it just add <laughs> to the end yeah, of that, that becomes the first. A, a much yeah. more complex uh, that becomes way too complex because then that involves changing the, the so the the reason time bowl is designed to have a single timeline is because uh, we wanted it to be as simple as possible for this because what happens is we don't want to compete with premiere pro and we, we don't want to like have those conflicting features with every other like we don't want to be just another regular editing software like it, it needs to be special so time bowl is designed unlike any other video editor on the market it's it's completely different the way it's designed and it's designed very purposefully now if we start adding multiple timelines and then it just becomes like every other yeah that's that's the reason yeah, that's mainly fine. it's why it's like that um, yeah, but yeah i mean fine. we could there are workarounds that we can do to solve your specific problem because i know that your problem is probably a lot of other people's problem too it, it does make sense for us to like uh have like as, as i said in the batch processing if you are doing 20 different files and you want to apply default settings to every file because you already have your settings set, right? So you know like right. which settings are gonna work for which file. So you have your settings set, you select 20 files, you say, I want them in the same XML file. And yeah, it it, it can generate that one big file, which you can then import, yeah. I guess, so what, what I've seen in Timebolt so far is that yes, we're dealing with one 
one timeline at a time. And I don't think I don't think even if we had 15 files, we'd have to deviate from that one timeline being edited at a time. What I'm seeing is is that if that is if that's the case, if you were to select three, you know how we have next like previous chunk, next chunk, right? If that became like next file, previous file, right? Like where you were hitting left and right, like after you edited, like I could go in and granularly keep this and not keep that and, you know, not blanket apply because maybe it's like a, a brand video or something where I need some breaths or whatever the hell, something has to change in there. And so the, the fact that you can go from timeline to timeline, it would still pull it up normally, but in the end, when it goes to render that XML, right, it takes all those saved timelines. I understand that that's complicated because now you got fucking JSON files and, you know, the auto has yeah, to I mean, auto, the whole auto save. Yeah, of the software changes, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, th like, that's yeah. that's the only thing. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I we have thought about this before, like, why not just have multiple timelines and, okay, you can have like one time blend and it, but then it just becomes so complicated that I don't know if anybody would spend the time to use it because right now what you do is you take your file, you upload it, you get the JSON and you're done. Like you get the XML and you're now how, if you make it more complicated, it, it means that people will have a steeper learning curve. People will need to spend more time learning it. And then it, it's very difficult yeah. to explain, but yeah, I mean, it becomes very complex. It becomes a very complex software. And I don't know how many people will be willing to like learn another ed editing software, which they like you have Premiere Pro, you have Filmora, you have, you know, Final Cut Pro. How many editing softwares do people want to learn? I That's guess the, the infrastructure yeah. couldn't uh you know right now basically if i'm looking at, at the ui right i have the the video chunk data and timeline that timeline could not support two videos on it same one timeline but just Correct. a file one and a file two yeah it, yeah. it, it can't right now so you right. you could do it but then you have to change the way it works like everything the philosophy of how it's built from the ground up everything will have to change because now you're addition you're adding so much complexity to it but then again like features like batch processing work just fine because you're applying default settings to an entire range of files you don't have to change anything internally you just have to like i do too so <laughs> yeah i think we i think we yeah, lost Quinston, yeah, he'll, he'll be joining back on. Yeah, no, this is this is the point of, of these after hours. I mean, Quinston, he, he knows how to take these complex needs and put it into something simple. And it's it's always great when the first thing he says is no, 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 that's, you know, putting all that because he usually finds a way. And <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, but I, you know, I, I, I see I see what you're saying, Chad. I mean, there are, mo there are times where I have three different video clips and I've got to go in and, right. and do each one. But uh, uh, I can yeah. also see, you know, some recording software that I've, I've used in the past. Yeah, sorry, my uh, it's no problem. Uh, uh, is is some recording software I've used in the, in the past? Like, there's a 30 minute limit on the file size, so it will automatically generate four files. There, you know, once you put them into something else, it, there's like no detectable seam but that can sometimes just uh be annoying uh to, to deal with and so in that situation if i wanted it all to be in one i'd probably bring it into premiere first stick all four uh files together render, render out, out another file yeah one without any anything and then bring it into time ball yeah that's, no, so that's what i said right the xml with multiple files that that makes sense like that is possible cool. i don't know and, the and those... versions of it but uh, i'm sorry i mean to walk over but could you maybe under the the, the timeline have an advanced tab or something that way it wouldn't be convoluted for the uh people who are just using the basic functionality but then would buy the advanced functionality now, i understand if it's it's uh, affecting the whole software like i said i don't understand the, the inner workings of how programming language is done on it but that would give you the option without convoluting it uh the ui for basic no that, that that makes sense um it's just that i don't know how many people would use the advanced features in the first place like is it really an advanced software like you already have things like premiere pro you already have things like final cut pro where you can do the advanced things like, I mean, that's what I said initially, like the reason Timebull is built the way it's built is because we don't want to compete with Premiere Pro. They've already solved a lot of problems when it comes to video ed ed editing. Like, why do we, why, why does every video editing software need to solve the same problems? Like, we're solving something that's completely separate. We have a different UI. It doesn't compete with anybody else. We're, uh, we have a unique space in which we exist. And, and if we try to like build uh, features, which every other software has, then it's like, then, it, then Timebull is not special anymore. That's the main right, thing. That like, makes sense. Yeah. And, and it's almost like we're building, like if you look, we built batch so how this happened like what was it Two, three weeks ago batch processing did yeah. not exist okay it, it there was a three weeks ago batch processing was just something that we'd heard you know kind of people talking about every once in a while but it, it you know on, on this live zoom you know our office hours customer got on he's like look I've, i'm an educator and i've got eight hours you know i've got eight hours worth of videos 
uh, on our lectures. I don't even hit stop. I asked, I was like, well, do you not hit pause record on Zoom? And he's like, no, because why would I do that? I got time bolt, right? So now he's got an eight hour video file that is- No, he has, he has to... eight, eight files, which are one hour long each. Oh, I thought it was a okay. single eight hour. No, no, it must, it's not a single file. I'm pretty file. sure. It's one hour. No, no, I promise. Because I'm... if he has one file, I mean, if he had one file, then why would he need pass rate? No, no, but he does it every day, right? So, yeah, he, so... so my, my point with that is that he's got one eight hour file per day. So he, he had five, he, let's say at the end of the week, he's got five, right? Okay, okay. But okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm making a distinction between people that do this in bulk and your advanced editors, right? They, they, everybody could use a bulk processing, but this guy, he can blanket apply an eight hour, you know, the same settings to an eight hour video. It knocks it down into three hours. And that's enough. Like that's good enough for his students to actually pay attention. I mean, that's an extra five hours of time. They're not sitting there doing something. But, you know, if it may have caught like a filler word or no filler word here or there, you know, like that's not a huge problem to him. That doing that bulk and applying those settings is one thing. And then you've got on the opposite side of the spectrum, you know, people that are that that still need to fine tune their their message that's that's going to have five different files, you know, that are five minutes long, six minutes long. And what what they're just saying is, is that right now that involves piling it all into one timeline and then rendering it out and then doing that inside time bolt. If there's uh, you know, as we as we progress on, uh, if there's a way to actually look at is there a way to string multiple file types of the same type together and put those five videos into timeline in time bolt and render it as one timeline as one video and xml it as one timeline as well i think it's a cool i, I could certainly see the use for something like that uh but um it's complex there's no doubt about it, it, it like, yeah. like like quinston's saying it's not something we're going to be able to just without some serious thinking but i mean everything quinston does here that's some serious thing i mean this product would look so shitty if it was up to me man i mean it would be complex it would be unusable i mean I, I try and figure stuff out for like days and Quincy's like, oh yeah, if you just, we'll just do this. And I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even think about it. like, it's, that's pretty much the whole product. So these are, these are good times to talk about stuff like this, Chad and Josh. Yeah. <laughs> so we've, we've... Uh, if y'all have any other uh, questions uh, that you want to ask me as a, as a kind of a power user, uh, feel free. Uh, You're gaming, con you, you, you create gaming content? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I make gaming how-to videos basically for Minecraft. What? What? I've never even heard of somebody like you exist. Gaming how like a tutorial on how to play the game. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's. I, so, I play a lot of Valorant. I play a lot of Valorant. <laughs> Once I'm you start playing Minecraft, Valorant. talk to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any recommendations? Okay. So one of the one of the things like with game with the gaming community, I couldn't imagine putting stuff up on YouTube without time bolt if I'm still live streaming two or three hours of gameplay. I mean, you know that. Right. And so what has happened is is that you, and, and gamers are competitive against one another, right? I mean, you, you guys are competing yes. a lot for the same types of eyeballs. So the yes. the number of like unlike on YouTube where everybody's teaching each other things and stuff like you don't find too. I haven't found very many resources where it's like, hey, I want to be a gaming content creator or opposed to YouTube, who's some of the influencers in this market that can teach me how to edit specifically gaming video and start start up a game channel? Like it's either you are a gamer or you're a YouTuber, right? There's no like right. game trainers for broad stroke games to where I could go right. to and say, hey, look, here's Time Bolt. Uh, sign up as an affiliate, tell your followers about it. Uh, that's just not something that once they find Time Bolt, they pr typically don't tell anybody else about it because it's like their own competitive advantage. Why the hell would you say <laughs> right. anything to anybody? Right. You know. and, and mostly like even like uh, being in the gaming space, if you are going to look up a tutorial on how to maybe cut your video or, uh, you know, make your stuff uh, fancier and, and more impactful, uh, normally you're just looking at the generalized editing tutorials there's really nobody who does gaming editing tutorials um because and most and to be honest a lot of it is because it's the same stuff like if you want something to fly in from the side and then explode well you're going to be using keyframes and so uh that is kind of the same it translates to the same terminology that any other video editing tutorial channel would show off anyway uh so in general in general there's not really an audience that if you're looking for how to edit a gaming video you're also just looking how to edit a video. I so bet, yeah. generally you just go to people who are, you know, the premier pro experts or the final Cut pro experts or, or whatever. There's a, there's a few, I, I really, when it comes down to gaming, the most of the gaming specific tutorials are how to set up your live stream software, how to set up a DSLR to hook into your live stream software, you know, how to get a green screen correct. Like that's really, unfortunately, it's not really about editing. It's more about how to record it. And then once you get to the editing aspect, it's just the, the general editing pipeline that everyone's in, so. 
Do, that's kind of if you could put a number on it, okay, just you're obviously gonna guess. But like, if you put a number on of the number of gamers that create YouTube channels that that, that post their live stream Twitch, you know, on, on VOD on the, on the YouTube, how what percentage of the population knows that there's software to cut out the boring parts out of their long gameplay? To the, very very few, but also there, I think there's a disconnect between the expectation and uh and the normal audience so if you are a live streamer you kind of go into live streaming with the expectation that there's going to be a bit of dead space and even time bolt isn't quite nuanced and you know there's a lot of stuff where like your reaction may be that oh i'm in shock and but i'm in silent shock you know as you would need to do the same you would have to go through and edit it no matter what and because it's like a two hour thing they're just not going to do that and they went in to the you know recording session with the expectation that it was going to be a live stream so they should be entertaining the entire time so most live streamers who do gaming content kind of expect to never edit their live streams down um they kind of go into it if if it's going to go as a vod somewhere it'll probably be completely unedited on the other side if it is edited it will have to be in the mr beast style with insane cuts and stuff flying in from the edges and you know and and a lot you know just an absolute ton of curation goes into the edit instead of just cutting out of the silences and also on top of all of that you need to make sure that you have recorded your footage in such a way explosions in the gameplay and stuff like that aren't going to trigger time bolts editing so you have to make sure that you are editing or multi-track. that you're recording your your footage multi-track and where you only have your mic on one track or you have your mic plus you know your friends mics on on Discord or whatever on another track. Um, so I think because of all of those speed bumps and barriers, uh, a time ball doesn't get used a lot in in that right. context. And, and so it, that that almost has to become part of our education process. Is like you right. kind of you got to record multi track audio. I mean, because right. you don't want explosions. What do you, do you use? Well, I mean, because you're making tutorials. Do, uh, have you thought about instead of cutting dead air, just speeding up? any silent any dead air sections so like if like, like let's say you, you do have a silent you know reaction you know we made it to where you can speed up action by 4x so what we see gamers doing is saying anything over you know three seconds long four seconds long don't cut it just speed it up by 4x yeah so now you know as you're playing and you start to learn that when you stop talking it's you know it's it's going to be sped up and when you do right. it's it's going to be on so like you could stop as you're going through a sequence hey i've got to go through and find this key master right, right. and you stop talking and then all of a sudden you know you're seeing this up going yeah like provides yeah, texture. and that works very well in let's play content where you're playing through straight through you know you are going 100 percent from you know the beginning of your game to the end yeah. of the game especially with minecraft where there's a lot of grinding and stuff you know you may be mining for 15 minutes um that's great for that when i've for me specifically my use case is because i'm doing tutorials uh there's a lot of times that my dead space is me looking at the wikipedia article for whatever i'm showing off or me opening up a new program you know minecraft is in two different programs java and bedrock and so you know if i sped it up it would be me closing the program waiting for the next program to open <laughs> getting into that world getting situation you know it's just it yeah. just doesn't the use case doesn't make yeah. sense for me specifically but for people who do straight video game content yeah it that does make sense and i think that's a cool feature so the continuous continuous play yeah. of straight gaming yeah, when content. you Not hit record con- yeah when basically your is to document mm-hmm. what is going on in the game that's the perfect use case but uh, one, one, one question i have is that uh the one question i have is a lot of people watch game streams right is there a percent do, like for example your audience right is there a percentage of your audience that uh, also streams or are they just are yes um uh yes there is a very small percentage that also streams out of that percentage most of them are not what you would call professional like if you Correct. tuned into their stream you would probably also not watch <laughs> their <laughs> stream <laughs> uh, uh so yeah there's there that does exist and then there's a very small handful of basically my friends who are also streamers who also are content creators who may pop in to a stream um, to watch so what what recommendation would you have when it comes to gamers for whom time bolt would be useful like what kind of games would they be playing what kind of content would they be making so i think uh the general like let's play is the perfect so like in that type of video right you jump into your world and you say hey i'm here my goal today is maybe to build a castle or whatever i'm gonna have to start by mining up some stone and all of that would be you know in the video because of time ball and then you have to go get your pick you have to go mine and then you come out hey i got 500 stacks of stone 
hooray, we can start building, you know, and then you'd build it. And and that type of use case is perfect uh, for Time Bolt. How I okay. personally use Time Bolt is, um, you know, I start off by saying, hey, today we're going to learn how to make a chicken farm. And then I can just be quiet as I like prepare the next thing. It's like the best place to put a chicken farm down is in a big open area. Be quiet until I like figure out the, you know, here are all the ingredients that you're going to need. So both of those, you know, when you can really control when you talk, there's, a, there's, and I've seen this with other games too. In fact, uh, there's a, someone who does a zombie game and there's crafting stuff in that. And one thing that I, I swear he uses time ball, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But one thing that he will do is when he is going on these long, like mining missions or whatever, he will, he, his whole audience like knows it. he'll do these bops. And so when he completes a thing, he'll go bop. And okay. I swear he's using time bolt just so that his, his, he knows what it is. is <laughs> yes. He's no, he knows the time bolt will make a little bop sound there. And so, and what it'll end up being in the final product is bop, 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 bop. And you'll see, you know, like a few frames of something being destroyed, something being, you know, put back, something, you know, it, it'll and it'll go by super fast. And I can see that use case versus the just straight speed up, um, you know, just, you know, applying 4X because you have more control over it. You know, you may want to take this moment also to go get some water and you know that you're just yeah. going to be staring at the ground for a while. Um, and so uh, I've seen that as well. And um, I swear he's using time ball. I don't know. But uh, every time he goes, bop, 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 you know, like, oh, I, I think okay, I so I have one more question. Um, That's great. Dude. Yeah. 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 So now I, I so me and Doug, we don't play those sort of games. Like I play Valorant, so I, it's completely different. Right. So my question is like, if, if so we, we need some sort of content to appeal to people who do Let's Plays, so would you be open to making a tutorial on how you use time bolt if I yeah mean, yeah i would yeah because definitely. we can take that video and then and then show this video to people who are similar create creators and then get them on board yes. would, yeah. would that be something would that be something that fit would fit naturally in your in your channel and do an affiliate thing or would no, that we can be... make a video for ourselves no i, yeah. I don't think it, it, it can go on his channel is yeah. is youtube kind of punishes if you make content that is just random. not yeah, it's just, random. yeah it's just random it's and so if i did a Premiere Pro tutorial, how to use Time Bolt and make it all work. Uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't. I would much prefer it to be. Not yeah, no. So my my <laughs> question was directed. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, my question was directed towards us using that content to basically show other creators who are similar to your space, so they right. can also like. Yeah, I mean, right. I don't know how you in feel that about video. Making, I could still yeah. do an affiliate thing <laughs> on yeah, yeah. your channel. And sure. Say, yeah. Use my yeah, affiliate yeah. code. <laughs> We're just not gamers, I mean, you know. Right. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a different universe. A little, yeah. a little, yeah. little, uh, little less known fact about me: about four years ago, I was number one hundred and fifty-three on Modern Combat. I would kick everybody's ass. <laughs> I got actual fucking tennis el or uh, uh, iPad Tenitis. elbow. <laughs> Dude, yeah, no, like I think it's just stress <laughs> from going down. Like you shouldn't be doing this much, you know. But, but uh, one hundred and fifty on Modern Combat, you know, it's a that's yeah. a good rank. <laughs> and, and I can show you all a bit of. Uh... You know, this is kind of what my content will end up looking like once it's all in, in Premiere oh, wow. is there's just so many layers and I have to add all the extra like, uh, you know, captions and stuff like that. Uh, you know, are, audio, are those transcripts music in the back? So, yeah. So this is using the uh, let me make sure. But yeah, so this is all transcript. That's a feature in feature uh, in Premiere Pro. Premiere yeah. Pro or yeah, where it can transcribe what you say, correct, and correct. edit it and then that's, a, it that's a newer, thing. isn't it? That, that, yeah, it's, it's in the it 2022 is, version. Yeah. Was that a game changer it, for you? Uh, not quite, to be honest. Um, it takes so much time that uh, I would rather rely on YouTube's uh, auto captions. Uh, this is a kind of an experiment for us to actually go through and make sure that every word is correct and, and whatnot. Um, and I'm not sure if it works for us. It just takes... You know, it almost takes another half day just to make sure that all the transcript is, what? is correct. Half a day? Um, and it takes forever because so much going on. And also, Minecraft does not lend itself to getting the names correctly. When I say something okay. like Shulker Box, you know, okay. it'll never, ever transcribe that correctly, you right. know, or Elytra or whatever. You know, when I'm, whenever I'm saying these things, uh, it just does not transcribe. Um, do and do so, you hard code it? Do you hard, so like, it's, do you render it with the video? No, I do not. Um, but you can. Um, I've done that for TikTok in the past where I've hard-coded it on the on the video. Um, 
in general so in so there's a few steps is one it will so in this step it is just reading the actually over here transcript is where this is the transcript of everything and i can easily edit this very simply then you take that into captions and then those captions can still be edited but they've already kind of been formatted for captions to be the correct length and the correct screen you know stuff like that so you can do a little bit of editing yeah. there but if you needed to add a whole extra sentence that wasn't there then that's probably not the place to do it and then once you have that captions that yeah. can either be baked into the video or or you can uh, export a captions file, and then YouTube can use that if you turn on the closed captions feature. Um, so, so if YouTube does it auto automatically, why do you have it? Like, why why are you using it in the first place? <laughs> exactly. So, YouTube's will still have some issues uh, with words, and and you know, YouTube is using the full audio track. So, if there's an explosion that kind of muffles a word, uh, it can get that a little bit wrong. Uh, users can also go in there and change that. And that's kind of the arithmetic we did is this takes so long to produce and and uh it does not okay, so boost what if, seo okay, so, so we don't do it so you did it here as an experiment you don't right. really do it at all right right so i can go into like uh say this landmines video there's no that whole caption we didn't even, i didn't even go through the process with this video so that whole track is just but, but then it. once you upload to youtube do you care about captions not necessarily not really okay it, it, so it'll do its auto-generated thing users can't submit changes if they want but the amount of users that are turning on captions is like one percent of my audience um most people don't okay. Use does captions. it does and it help so, get the get get more views? No, and that's that's mainly why you know this was an experiment to see does it help get views? Does it help SEO? Does it help at all? And ooh, I didn't see a big bump uh, from from doing all that work, so I gave up on it. But 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 you do do it for TikTok. Like if you have to make a video for TikTok or Instagram Reels, you do hardcore uh, captioning. Sometimes, so it depends on the content, and we are seeing a better return on that because. Uh, TikTok will go to Instagram and it'll go to Facebook. And on those, they will autoplay the video without audio. Now on TikTok, you are normally listening with audio, but on Instagram and Facebook, you will start to see the video, but not have any context of what's going on. So that's why the hard-coded captions will work there. And also because the video is only, you know, 60 seconds to 90 yeah. seconds, uh, it does not take nearly as much uh, effort as, you know, this, well, this was only a seven minute video, and, but and you do it in you know, some of my videos. Video. So this was kind of an experiment. Like I was trying to work with it. You can kind of see all the style of this text is not yeah. very good. We hard coded this in people who are listening on mute on Facebook or Instagram will be able to know what's going on without turning up their audio. There you go. And so you can see, so, but these captions aren't auto generated, right? These are like, you no. didn't use so, auto generation for these. No, the, the way that this works is so I'd go to this, uh, you know, window text in here exists. There you go. Um, and then, uh, you'd hit this create captions. Uh, option and you choose the da, 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 da. i'm actually one step ahead here we go i have to reach transcribe the sequence okay. so you can say choose all the audio from you know in this case all Which my one? words are on track two so audio two yeah and then i hit transcribe and then it will generate the transcription uh and it's pretty it's pretty accurate and then after that i, I would you know you have the the transcription and so i would the text okay and so is yeah. that doing that can i ask a, like a technical question is that is that generating those captions or is that generating yeah. the, is it like sending something to the cloud or is that all yeah it is it is transcribing um i think that it's actually it I can't tell if it's on the cloud or uh on device. Yeah, you, yeah um, no, actually so because hmm. I think I've done this on a plane trip when I had okay. no internet. How the hell do you uh, add that? Um, so maybe they baked it into the software that they even <laughs> yeah. uh, Wow, language a language baked in in a local transcript engine, rendering out audio data. How this accurate is, is this? Transcribing is this on accurate? device. Transcribing it's very accurate. And it and one of the features I like about this versus some other transcribing features is it adds periods and capitalizations and commas punctuation yeah um yeah and so you yeah you know you can't hear this i can actually pump it to y'all but uh nobody can talk so if y'all talk you're yeah. gonna hear it echo back so everyone be quiet for just a second and you can watch it uh go along oh it is 19 okay. that nobody is talking about if you activate a skulk shrieker three times it'll draw in the so, warden in that situation like shrieker is you know a skulk shriek you know three times a minute out of the comma it'll draw in the warden and so yeah that's a uh, very useful so periods <laughs> periods and capitalization 
Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, a skulk shrieker, you know, uh, not normal stuff that English speakers say. <laughs> so, in, and, you know, in, in here, you know, these right here are, uh, you know, I might go in here and say, okay, well, if this is warden approaches, well, this is actually kind of a quotation. So I may go in there, warden approaches, and then add my quotes, and then that will be in the transcription. Yeah. And then when I go to add this as my caption file, it will keep all of that. Um, so you can see it's not formatted well, but Warden Approaches is now even. Yeah, so Premiere Pro is like, and, and the styles, uh, how, how do you style it? Is it? So then I would go in here, uh, I double click this and it opens up, uh, the essential graphics tab. And then I can change this to be whatever I want. So I guess say Ubuntu mono, let's make the size of it a bit bigger. Uh, earlier you saw it with a, a background, so I can add like, white background here. Okay. I don't like how that looks, so I can the padding a bit bigger. And then over here, there's this little arrow. So right now I did that to that one text file. All the others are back the other way. This arrow will apply this to all the others. Oh, and so that's now awesome. we've created. Yeah. So that you can see why, as you know, I love Time Bolt, but there's just a few features that uh, no, of course, like, I have to um, live, yeah. you know. I mean, for you, it's uh, very simple because you have been using Premiere Pro, which is such an advanced piece of software that a lot of things for you are like second nature. Um, right. But a lot of people who are like, starting video editing and and don't particularly want to use software like this because it's it takes it's a long time to learn yeah it I, takes a long time to understand yeah i said yeah. at the beginning of the call i think i've been doing this for 10 years uh editing uh in yeah exactly so or final cut the, you know equivalent yeah there has to be like a easier way to do it and and we've been pondering like me and doug i've been pondering about how do we make this easier first of all I, I don't know yet like i look at this and i'm like this does seem very complex and it does seem like I mean, it's not complex but it takes like a learning curve right, i'd say Absolutely. If, once you know what to do it does it, it does seem easier but yeah because if you see all all pieces of content on tiktok now are captioned they have to be captioned because if if, if you don't have audio like how do you interact right. like you yeah so it, it, and it's TikTok very has an feature. auto caption feature um okay and i've used that as well my issue is that you have to have it turned on and also that you know, I want my content to be cross-platform. I want it to exist on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever sure. the next short form video. Oh, YouTube shorts. Real. There's another yeah. one. Um, right, real. Yeah, all that stuff. A, it's just a time sink for me to go in and try to make sure that each one of those platforms has the correct captions. Um, and two, I don't even know if, you know, you on, on TikTok, you have to kind of click the captions button for it to show up. So I don't want to rely on that. Well, um, I'll go ahead and end this. I'll go ahead and end it. And our live office hours here on September 8, 2022 with Doug Quinson and our gaming content creator friend, Chad. And Chad. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, hope you enjoyed today's show. And as we say, we're out of time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, like, and notification bell. Thank you. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Hey, have a nice day, guys. Good talking to you. Thank you, yeah, Chad. Appreciate it, man. Of course. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.